Hey, we're back again with another Tucson Tuesday. And today I have a relatively interesting, uh, kind of off the beaten path kind of knife here. We got a very, very stocky, tall kind of handle going on here. We have a flipper tab. We have some uh, thumb studs going on here. We have a pocket clip. We can kind of see um, that uh, this is uh, most likely going to be a uh, Mazwan Mokhtar inspired pocket clip. However, this one does have a little bit more of a ramp rather than a single dot. This thing is a little bit easier to get into and out of the pocket. We uh, can also see, if I uh, hold it up here, that uh, we have a little bit of uh, Dumbo ears or Alfred E. Newman ears uh, going on for these uh, thumb studs. Something that I had mentioned kind of uh, with a, uh, a Jelly Jerry knife in the past, but these are so close to the handles on here and has a uh, fairly strong detent that I haven't had really had these uh, catch on my uh, on any of the materials on my pants or something like that that would help me um, or accidentally uh, semi-deploy the blade here. We have the, uh, the call-out pivot collar. Yep, it's... Uh, not some people's jams, so if it's not yours, eh, you can go ahead and um, just uh, move on by this particular design, or you can, um, you know, do what I've done with the uh, the TS four hundred here and kind of modify that by uh, kind of grinding it off on the front there. Um, just as long as you don't end up accidentally melting your fingers in the process, because uh, you can generate quite a bit of heat trying to uh, grind off enough of that titanium. But uh, alrighty. Let's go ahead and open her up. Ka-chunk. There we go. And we have maybe, a, it's a very, very interesting kind of um, collide of American and traditional uh, Tonto sort of things here. But a little bit more of a chisel tip also. Um, quite interesting. Uh, we actually have 14C28N for the, uh, the blade steel on this one here rather than... Um, there we go. Rather than uh, D2 that's on most newer uh, two suns here. Glad to see that in this particular case. We can see we have a uh, titanium subframe lock. I will basically end up calling it that. It is just a little bit thicker than uh, you would get out of standard liners. And, you know, the, uh, the bolster up top here and that is uh, the same there. You can call it a bolster lock if you want as well. But... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to just end up calling that a subframe lock. But, uh, yes, we can see we have uh, some carbon fiber uh, inlays here. That does uh, do quite a bit of the um, weight relieving on this guy here, since they do have to be carved into the top. That's why you end up having a titanium bolster on it. Because of that, you're not going to have much in the way of um, uh, milling work done on the inside, outside of what's actually necessary for the pivot and all that sort of stuff. So this thing is uh, mostly credited as a Mazwan Mokhtar design, but uh, I do think uh, we uh, getting to the inside of this, uh, we will um, kind of discover that uh, he was kind of a co-creator on that. Uh, this thing does have a little bit of a weird feeling when you're opening it, and I can probably kind of show you a little bit of that here if we uh, take a look at um, basically this bolster here. As I'm moving it, you can see it dip down there, but then it's come back up before it uh, you know, ends up um, getting off of that... Uh, that detent there. And that's basically that, uh, that detent track slightly coming off of uh, this plunge grind here since it's uh, out all the way. Uh, really interesting. I haven't seen that happen all that much. It does make the uh, the clothes on this thing feel a little bit different. Um, still nice and smooth, but um, maybe just a little bit different than what you might be expecting. We do have an uh, internal blade stop pin, one that goes through the blade there. So in case you did need to... Uh, Cut a sharpening choil, you know, it's not going to uh, stop you from uh, doing any of that sort of stuff. The uh, the sharpening choil and plunge grind, pretty good. Uh, I do like how quick that this uh, plunge grind goes on there, but it wouldn't be all that bad if uh, the sharpening choil was extended just a little bit further out to uh, separate you from that um, 
that plunge grind just a little bit. But still, this is definitely done a heck of a lot better than a lot of them that are really gradual. Um, so you will avoid uh, putting a smile on your blade when you're uh, doing some reprofiling and stuff like that. We can also see down here we have a little bit of a, uh, a groove uh, going in that backspacer uh, on the underside to uh, make sure that the blade... Um, even if you are, uh, really slamming it closed, isn't going to, uh, come in contact with that and mar the blade up. The blade is decently into the handle, but the blade stock thickness is a little on a thicker side. So if you do have some, uh, thicker meatier, uh, fingers, they can accidentally get in there, but still it's, um, this one isn't what I would call, you know, like a danger or, um, you know, like a snaggle to sort of situation. You have to actually work to get your finger meat in there to be able to meet that blade. But still, having a uh, thinner blade stock thickness also does cut down on some of that. So, yeah. So, this thing is uh, really, really nicely uh, hollow ground on uh, the uh, the standard flat portion of the blade there. Um, it is uh, Two Suns um, standard hollow grind there, so it is still a little robust behind that edge. It doesn't come down quite nearly as thin as uh, some of their uh, full flat grinds do. So it's still robust, but still has um, you know a lot of uh, that uh, extra blade uh, removed to uh, kind of remove some of that friction there. But this uh, this tip here, which does have a little bit of a round rather than a, a standard straight portion to it um quite a bit thicker this is one of those where i had to um sharpen the flats to uh 17 degrees uh and then the uh the uh the tip here to uh 23 degrees to be able to keep that shoulder um uh, even throughout and that makes sense i guess uh much more robust up here but still with this uh this whole tip portion here this is uh, kind of useful in the same way that, uh, let's see if I can't find this knife as I wander away from uh, my microphone here. There we go. Something that uh, I got many years ago. And this one is uh, very, very weird and uh, also really, really <laughs> uh, beat up and everything. But this is a Spyderco Captain. Uh, but yeah, this thing also has kind of that, uh, standard, uh, rounded sort of thing here. Of course, I've done all sorts of, uh, terrible things to the, uh, sharpening on this thing overall. And I've also cut in my own wave <laughs> feature on this thing. It is what it is. This is definitely not one that would ever, uh, be sold because it's so much different than, uh, what you would get if you were to actually get one of these things new, which is, you know, virtually impossible these days, but still. I would use that in the same way of basically using it as a chisel. You can cut a little bit with it, but it's mostly used for uh, a lot of scraping and stuff like that. This is a straight back, very, very robust at the tip there too. So you can uh, kind of shove this thing in there, but with just how thick it is and how much steel is there, uh, I wouldn't necessarily call this thing an amazing, um, you know, penetrative power with it. So it's interesting. It, it is kind of a, uh, a mixture of Tontos, but a uh, master of not penetration. Right. Eh, there we go. We got a few uh, fullers going on here. They, uh, they do have, they are essentially the same length, but uh, they are kind of moved up and back. Just kind of a, um, an aesthetic flourish, nothing really that's uh, functional or anything. You know, since it's uh, completely enclosed in here, you couldn't really use that for um, trying to use it as a uh, deployment method. Uh, and we do have uh, a couple of uh, crenellated uh, jimpings right where I would want them, which is uh, always nice to uh, see. Uh, I really do appreciate that. Yeah, how about if we go through some uh, specs and stuff like that? Uh, blade stock thickness on here is a little bit thinner than we get uh, on a lot of other ones. It's 3.6 millimeters, so just a little tiny bit thinner. This one, uh, uh, around average weight, we got uh, 4.81 ounces or 136.5 grams. 
So it's not a, a crazy, crazy lightweight, but you also wouldn't really expect that out of a, a knife that's uh, well over an inch tall. We got 3.17 inch uh, blade stock, or uh, not blade stock, but uh, blade length, basically from the, uh, the tip up here out to the tip here. That's 80.5 millimeters for y'all metrically inclined. And then 0 0.55 of an inch, or a little over half an inch thick. That's 14 millimeters there. Just a little bit thicker than a Spartaco PM2, but not by much. And because we have these uh, two kind of uh, facets going on uh, on either side, does a, a pretty good job of um, uh, having a, an effect of uh, contouring uh, that also that uh, bolster ends up helping out with. So it does fill out the hands quite nice with uh, being a little bit thinner on top and bottom without uh, really having any other kind of uh, sacrifices. So pretty cool. Let's go ahead and do some um, blade size comparisons. I didn't move my things back to where I wanted them, so apologies as I kind of look for the ones that I want to uh, pull out here. There we go. Let's go with the uh, the Benchmade 914, or 940, not 914. Uh, let's see. I am also looking for... Ah, oh, there we go. Bug out, which was actually in its correct place. And there we go. We can see we do have a, uh, around the same kind of, um, length dimensions as, as the bug out, but obviously much, much taller here. Let's see. I can also, sure. Why not pull out the, um, the whole Civivi Elementum. And I don't know. There's the uh, Spartaco PM, or, yeah, PM3. Or, sorry, Para 3, not PM3. Because they, of course, had to make their naming conventions very, very confusing. There's the Paramilitary 2. So we can see that uh, much shorter as far as just overall length going on there. That's <laughs> sorry for a lot of this. Uh, I do have some more that uh, I will pull out here. There's the uh, K-Bar Folding Hunter, since it's kind of a uh, smaller knife overall. And sure, uh, right number one, because I don't own a number two, which would be a little bit more appropriate for uh that one in particular there and sure why not we'll go with the uh uh bench made griptilian so there we go i should adjust and uh put away all of those over there <laughs> at some point after i'm done with this video but alrighty. so with that being said I've covered uh, mostly everything that uh, I want to cover here. There is one more thing uh, on the inside. But uh, for the most part, if you were here for a standard review of this guy, there you go. It's uh, it's an interesting one. You basically have a sheep's foot with a, uh, a nice scraping chisel sort of thing on the end of it. Not something that I would probably use in most kind of uh, Tonto applications, but it is kind of shaped that way. There you go. For the rest of us, though, let's go ahead and uh, take a peek a little bit... Uh, more under the covers, shall we say, without trying too hard to be that creepy. Let's move that Chicago screw out of the way a little bit so I can get that out of there. Single attachment point, but it is asymmetrical, so yeah, no problems there with uh, that. And also carbon fiber can uh, take that pretty easily. And we got the uh, little pivot collar out here. So I can pull that out. Not much going on uh, on the inside here. Uh, we do have uh, their steel lock bar insert. No uh, over travel stop on this one in particular because we have the carbon fiber that's uh, serving that purpose. So there we go. We do have uh, multi-row bearings on here, which I forgot about. Um, they're not really helping out all that much as far as um, as far as action goes on this thing in particular, but it does help with uh, the side-to-side -side play since you have 
more bearings in uh, kind of that same surface area there. And this is what I wanted to uh, talk to you about a little bit. So we got uh, Mazwan Mokhtar and the Metal Monkey here. Uh, and if I remember right, and uh, I would really be sad and frustrated if I actually got this wrong. And apologies, because I didn't think about uh, pulling this out until now. And it's, of course, in uh, a little shelf space that is blocked off at the moment. Here we go. This guy right here. Yes. This was also uh, one from uh, that same designer who worked with Mazwan Mokhtar. Uh, now this is um, a, uh, I guess they go by the Metal Monkey. Um, they are uh, a fairly young designer. Um, see, it's the son of uh, Danny Mokhtar, who's uh, not related to Mazwan Mokhtar, but is friends with him which is how uh, they kind of got together. This was the uh, the first collaboration. This one actually has a name, the Suryu. I don't know if this one has a name, but I would love to know if um, if Danny Markler may, uh, you know, actually uh, see this review and uh, let me know if it does. But, uh, yeah, very, very different design, but uh, still uh, kind of done by the same people. So uh, from what I understand, Mazwan Mokhtar um, ends up doing a lot of the, uh, the actual... CAD work for it out of the, uh, the drawings and designs and stuff like that, that, um, this other, uh, Mokhtar guy, uh, very, very young has, uh, ended up doing for them, but, uh, ends up working out all right. And, uh, I guess the first one worked out, uh, quite well. So they've, uh, done it here with this one. And I wanted to make sure that the um, the uh, the maker's marks actually uh, matched up. I was pretty sure I was correct on that, but I didn't want to uh, accidentally uh, give some false information there. So yes, this is a uh, a Mazwan Mokhtar um, assisted design, but uh, as far as I understand. Uh, it wasn't his uh, original design. It was um, Metal Monkeys. So, there you go. Let's go ahead and uh, pop this guy back together, which is relatively easy to do. Get that pivot collar back in there. Now I can get that pocket clip in there. And, uh, yeah, this one does have a, uh, similar pocket clip, but not quite just the, uh, the ball point sort of thing as the, the Suri does. So it is, um, definitely easier to get into and out of the pocket. That, and it also isn't interfacing with, uh, frag pattern, uh, titanium. It's interfacing with, uh, carbon fiber. So a little bit easier to get into and out of the pocket overall. But, yeah, there we go. Goes back together all sorts of easily. Nicely um, snug in there. Super centered. But uh, even if it was a little bit off, it would probably be rubbing against the uh, titanium subframe lock or bolster lock or whatever the heck you want to end up calling it. But there we go. There's everything I wanted to talk about with it. It's the TS-379. I don't know if it has uh, an actual name outside of this particular model number, but I would love to know if anybody... Uh, has uh, any, um, you know, uh, factual uh, information to uh, to the contrary of that, please leave it down below. But in the meantime, that's uh, everything I wanted to say about it. So there we go. As always, I appreciate y'all for watching. And have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo. Yeah,